What is up guys, Speed here, and today I'm bringing you a new idea that I had. It is Drafting Simulation, and the premise of this is that I'm going to be simply doing a mock draft with my friend here, and I'm going to be talking about advanced ideas in drafting, more basic ideas, the specific draft that I'm looking at, certain heroes, and just basically when you want to pick stuff, and the purpose of it. So this will help you specifically both in captain's mode, primarily in captain's mode drafting, but also in all pick just to understand the benefit of picking certain heroes early and also the benefit of picking certain heroes later or just filling in a draft. So first off, my idea here is that I want to go for some sort of a troll draft. Troll Warlord is a hero you can first phase often because it's somewhat flexible in the sense that you can first phase it and put it either mid or safe lane. So in that regard, I kind of like putting that hero first phase. Cole did it against us, complexity, like when I played them once, and I felt like it was a interesting idea at the least. So first off, I'm just going to be banning out a few heroes that I think are pretty good against Troll, and what this will allow me to do is set up for him having a good game. And the reason why you can pick cores in the early game here is that I can protect them with two bands, right? I can protect them with the two later bands, but I also can preliminary to protect them with three bands. So I can either look at the meta heroes and ban a meta, which I'm kind of doing here, right? A lot of the popular meta heroes are very good against Troll, being Razor and OD, but also I'm setting up just to pick the hero in general, right? So last turn I'm going to ban Ember, uh, just another hero that's particularly good at kiting Troll and can contain the tempo of the game as a mid or safe lane hero. So just a bunch of flex heroes or very strong meta heroes that I think are pretty good against Troll. And now we have first pick, which is important to know. Having first pick is a lot different than 8-9. Often with 8-9, you can be somewhat more revealing with your first pick, but first pick is reserved typically for two things. A either super strong meta hero, like for instance, Leshrac at TI5 or Gyrocopter TI5 or what else was there? In recent tournaments, maybe TI7 Alchemist, something like that. Um, just heroes that basically were super, super, super strong for their patches. And here we're going to pick up Nature's Prophet, and the idea with Nature's Prophet here being a first pick is that it's a somewhat strong hero in the meta, right? Or at least regarded in my mind. And in addition, it can either go in the position 3 or the position 5 role, and this is something important to consider when drafting. If you pick something very straightforward in your first slot, then it really opens up your draft and it limits your capabilities in getting these proper lanes set up. So, Prophet is one of the best heroes in Dota for getting proper lane setups because... Not only is the hero naturally able to move around the lanes quickly with teleport and get lanes that you want in that regard, but he's also played in two or three different positions. Even EG has picked him mid before, so you really can put this hero anyway. And now here they pick um, Winter Wyvern and Pango, so I'm a little bit dissuaded to pick the Troll Warlord. It's obviously not too great against these heroes. I think in more of a competitive game, I would look to pick something that is a little bit better against these heroes because Troll can get easily kited by Wyvern and disarmed by Pango, as well as rolled on by Pango, and the magic damage can be very detrimental to him. But I'm going to stick to my guns, right? This is kind of an idea in Dota where even if something doesn't look amazing for a game, if you're very confident in it as a team and you guys know you can play well around it, just pick, pick Comfort, right? Comfort over meta is just much better simply because often if you have players that don't have either wide hero pools or limited hero pools, you really should not try to push them outside their boundaries, especially for important games, right? If it's a scrim, maybe you go outside the box, try to have them practice something. But in general, I would overall say that you want to stick more towards what your players are comfortable with. And this is a great way to just kind of get ahead in the game, um, even in games that can be quite poor. So here, I'm going to ban Tidehunter. Um, actually, no, they have a Pango already. It could be Pango mid, in which case I, I fear the Tide a little bit. So I'm going to ban him out here. Um... It's very good against the Treants, maybe not at level 1, right, but at level 2 at least you have Kraken in your E and it's very hard for Prophet to zone him if it is a 5 Prophet, and you reduce Troll's damage in the game, as well as provide a lot of teamfight that I don't want to have to deal with, right. I'm going to try to limit their teamfight as much as possible here. Um, something else I could try to do, instead of just protecting my Troll, is protect him indirectly through banning out the other strong core matchups that are good against him, and in particular... I would say the core matchups that are good against Troll are the ones that can kite him. So, uh, maybe like Weaver's okay. What else? Spectre's alright against Troll. PA's not bad. Jug is okay. So, there's a few out there. Maybe there's too many for me to ban. So, I'll stick more towards banning out some strength heroes. Actually, I'm going to ban out the Venge. So, Venge here is also very good against Troll. Purely because you can swap people out when he goes on them. Easily kiting him. You can stun him. 
and really it's just a great hero right now so this is where you're just gonna kind of respect Vanna support I think they need either a four or a five and Venge can fill both of those roles Wyvern is a hero that typically doesn't control or lock down heroes directly so if I have a Wyvern on my team I'd much rather have another form of initiation right they have the Pango but even Pango can be a little bit iffy um, especially if I end up counter picking it here which I think I will uh, maybe I'll pick up the Grimstroke here. So the Grimstroke will allow me to silence the Wyvern on the back line. Uh, completely lock down the Pango during his ult, which prevents him from snowballing. Really shuts down this hero. Super hard. Yeah, they, it could be a nice hero. That will also give me a lot more wave clear that can allow me to make space for Troll, as well as present a pretty solid lane for any safe laner that they try to put against it. So, In addition, I could maybe use some more team fights. So Grimstroke plus... Uh, an ultimate such as Doom or Batrider could be very good this game. Both heroes look pretty solid for us here. I'm not sure, both are very good with Grimstroke, so I'll have to consider there. But at this point in the draft, I'm looking into what heroes kind of fill out the gaps, right? Currently, I'm lacking control, right? I lack some sort of disable, so I want my next three heroes to have some forms of disable. Interesting pick here, he goes up for the Bane, uh, which is pretty good against Grimstroke, so that makes my lanes a little bit harder, but... We can deal with it. I think the Grimstroke is still okay here. Still gives good team fight. can silence the Bane from a range, and we'll still go for it. Let's say I have a good Grimstroke player here, then I'm going to pick it anyway, so not bad. So in this position as well, I can try to put my Nature's Prophet against the Bane. Right, Nature's Prophet is one of the better supports in Dota against Bane, and it's also a reason why I would like Prophet as a early pick support, because it kind of covers heroes like Bane, right? Bane can't really be zoned out by a lot of heroes, but now I do have the option of putting the Prophet Troll against the Spectre Warlock, which will be a big difference. Um, so here we're going to pick up the Doom. Pretty nice matchup against the Spectre, gives plenty of damage to kill him. I could also go something like a Necrophos, but I want to have a little bit more tempo, like high pace, to pressure fights. So we're going to go for the Doom, right? Also just a basic combo with the Grimstroke. It'll make my team fights a lot easier, and now I kind of have covered my gaps where I can fight in the early game, right? I'm a little bit cooldown reliant, that's my only concern. However, the way you can often play around cooldowns, like a cooldown reliant team, is by picking a wave clear. And now I have Prophet and Grimstroke to do that. In addition, I have one more pick here. So I'm going to look to ban. Oh, well, I'm thinking my picks here are either Pugna, right? Because Pugna is fantastic with Grimstroke. Decrep plus his ultimate or just the bug is a fantastic combo. In addition, it will give me some tower push. Uh, you could look at my team and say, well, I have Troll and Prophet for tower push but not really especially not in the early game because they have wyvern and pango to push out the lanes um, and really prevent them from doing that i need my troll to be farming in addition so pugna can be nice for that however they have last pick so i'm a little bit uncomfortable picking the pugna because they can respond with a jump hero and make my game pretty hard um, so as a result maybe i'll go for a uh, kunka i don't really have the best of catch right all these heroes are somewhat unreliable catch they have Technically, they all have some form of catch, but it's definitely not a good stun. Um, no instant disable, Kunkka isn't either, but I don't necessarily need instant disable here. But a Kunkka pick would be fantastic. Don't want to ban it, obviously. <laughs> but um, maybe we'll ban out the Timber. Could be hard for us to kill Timber. We do have the Doom, though, so maybe not too big of a deal. Um, I could even ban out the Pugna from them. Could make my game very hard, actually. It's not too good against Kunkka, though, so I could leave it in the pool. Monkey King already banned out. Bad Rider could be scary if they put it here. Also, they could use a Death Prophet. Death Prophet's not bad. It also is a good Yules hero against Kunkka, where Death Prophet can actually push a hero. I mean, sorry, push a tower against Kunkka because she can Yules off his X combo. That's a natural item. So we're going to ban up the DP and pick up Kunkka here. And what Kunkka will allow me to do is, once again, have really good wave clear. Kunkka is excellent, absolutely excellent at defending towers. So hopefully he can make enough space for my troll to get at least his items in the early game and fight early with my Doom, Grimstroke, and Prophet, right? A super good early game fighting hero. Uh, they lack a little bit of damage to kill him. Maybe Lina's fairly decent, but we do have the Kunkka catch for the Lina. So overall, I feel like I am able to cover most of the gaps of Dota here, right? I have a little bit of tower push with the Prophet and the Troll. We'll have to push a little bit later on, which maybe could become a problem with Spectre, but I also have team fight with Grimstroke Doom, so kind of a nice mix there. And I have plenty of wave clear so that I can make sure that they can't run down towers with Lina, or at least dive me too easily, right? I have very good respond to their dive with the Grimstroke Gold, the Prophet Ult, the Kunkka X. So in this game in particular, what we'll be looking to do as a team is wait until Troll gets his BKB, play around that timing, and besides that, let the other four fight, and they should be pretty strong and be able to take early engagements. 
So, yep, that's my idea here. Hopefully, there's some good tad bits in here. And we're going to be doing two games, so let's head over into the second draft. Moving into game two. For this draft, I'm going to be trying to maybe build around some physical damage oriented rather than a troll in perspective. So, first off, we're just going to go with kind of similar bands where I'm going to ban with the racer. And actually, what I'm going to go for here is a pseudo, like, maybe like a drow strat per se. Because I think at the beginning of drafts, you kind of want to have an idea in mind. And often what you'll hear from a lot of pro players and like coaches after they come out of the booth and like, like ask what they have to say about the draft is like, they're like, oh, we got the heroes we wanted. And a lot of the times it's it's more about the heroes that you want rather than hardcore counterpicking. Because I think typically comfort picks are outvalue counter picks the majority of the time. Obviously having a, like being able to have both is optimal. But in general, that's like something to keep in mind for sure. So, here, other meta heroes. Um, could ban the OD again. I think it's just a dangerous hero. Something I wouldn't want to play against. Actually, Drow strats are pretty good against OD, so I could have left it in this game. But, what you gonna do? Not the end of the world. So, for my dress right here, I'm gonna go for right, like a 15 to 20 minute timing. Something kind of in the middle. Where I can scale if needed, but overall, not gonna want to. Also, I could have left the OD in primarily because it's also very good with the Drow strat, so. A little bit hesitant on bending it there. Same thing for Razor. I could have left them, especially because I have first pick. Sorry, I am lost a little bit of focus there. Um, as you can see, I have much less reserve time before I even started because um, I was just talking to um, Yemsen as well. But moving on. Heroes I wouldn't want to play against. He picked the Wyvern early last time, and that does very well against Drow Strats, so maybe I'll ban that. Also, the thing about banning is sometimes you can make it obvious what you're going to pick by banning. So occasionally you can just like ban things that are obscure per se and often what that will do is allow you to just kind of get what you want or prevent them from picking counters early so th that's something to keep in mind where you just intentionally don't ban things that counter your draft so that they don't pick counter picks early on at least and so here i could pick this sven because something like a lane i might want to go for here is sven luna Drow, that's like a super good lane, but that can give it away too early. Other good picks early, could have picked the OD or the Razor, so maybe I, I kind of wish I left them in, right, because those would have been really nice. The Venge also is good, but he banned that out. Um, even the Prophet's pretty good, banned that out as well. Other good heroes, five manners, Dazzle's alright, Bane's okay. I think I'm just gonna go for the Sven though. Also, what picking Sven here does is basically if I don't like a Drow Strata for these next two picks, I can just say, okay, Sven core, and let's just go more towards like a um, more of a like a farming based draft, not like some five man drow uh, physical damage draft. Also, something to note is that you don't have to fully commit to ranged heroes when going for a drow strat. Um, typically, I'd recommend having at least two cores, but having three is not definitely not necessary. Often, having your offlaner as some like melee initiator is a lot better. Something like Beastmaster or Sand King, something like that. Okay, so they lead with the Life Sealer Enigma. Now, I'm fine. The draft strat is good against. Life Sealer, but it's not very good against Enigma. Something to note here is that I can just get away with putting the Drow against the Enigma lane in just a dual lane setting, or I can aggro into the Life Sealer, and I think that might be what I do, because now that they have the Enigma, I know they can't really try lane. Um, it's a little bit awkward for me to try lane. I have to avoid the Enigma, right? I have to go aggro. I can't try lane into a lane with only three creeps, or else we'll get no XP. So I'm just going to pick the Drow. I'm going to say that I'm basically committed to this. I could pick the Luna here, which is all right, but... We're just going to go for Drow and really commit to this Drow strat. So he might be able to ban out the Luna here. So maybe it was better for me to pick the Luna 7. Because the Luna's pretty integral in this. Right? Simply because the hero does very well in Drow strats. Because you buff everyone's primary attribute. And you make the lane very strong. But it's not the end of the world if I don't get it. Now we're going to ban out some of the teamfight heroes. We'll ban out Coddle. Because that gives them high ground defense. Um, it also is good against Drow strats because of the blinding light. Right? Everyone can kind of hit the ultimate but often it's enough control to actually win team fights and uh, but more importantly is the blinding light which will make our tri lane less potent right because they can blast it push out the wave and um 80 percent miss chances pretty potent other heroes i would want to ban here maybe necro you could probably deal with it bad rider potentially is a little bit scary here only because it could deal with our dual lane but what i'm thinking is i can just pick like a legion or something as my offlaner and put her against the bad rider lane. Also, I could go for an Abaddon if really needed as the 5 position and make this a 7-4, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'd rather have this fan as a 5, but 
Not terrible. Also, I can ban out the Pango here, which I like. It can be pretty scary against this Drow Strat because the rolls just makes it very hard to fight. Also, it's very good with Enigma because you're allowed to solo lane and you'll always have a Creep Wave coming into you. So it's a good hero in that regard. Also, it's good at fighting early, which Life Stealer kind of needs a hero to do. Right? He needs someone to make space until he has his Radiance for him. So here, I'm probably going to take the Luna at 16 if he doesn't ban it. Uh, I would expect them to ban it because this is very... This is very standard, like a lot of teams do this, the Sven, Drow, Luna. Uh, maybe he feels like he can just ignore it, but also something to keep in mind is that I can put the Drow mid if needed. Let's say they pick a weak matchup, I can just put the Drow mid. Uh, but currently I'm looking more at an aggro trialing for the Drow. And also what an aggro trialing does for Drow is it allows one support to stack Ancients very reliably. Like they'll always be in the area, and Ancient stacks for Drow are crucial, so... Aggro Trilene, definitely not a bad idea here. You could definitely pick Marana as well. Doesn't benefit too much from the attack speed, so maybe it's not that good. I actually haven't seen it, but it seems like it's okay. Okay, so he goes for the Bane. So I definitely can Trilene here. Bane's not that great against Trilene. We're going to pick up the Luna. We're going to try this out. We're, we're basically committing to our draw strat now, and this Aggro Trilene, but this lane is super strong. Like, you have so much right-click damage, and it's very hard for Bane to deal with it, because Bane actually typically does very poorly against Trilanes. Um, often, he can deal very well against either... Uh, a solo lane or a dual lane because he can trade very effectively with the one support but tri lanes he's just going to get stunned um he's going to get these Sven stunned into a loosen beam or just right clicks he's going to be more than enough to zone him out and make, make brain sap not nearly effective enough in addition in the team fights we have very easy cancel now for the bane ultimate one simple loosen beam low committal simple cancel also a long range cancel especially at level 10 you get the cast range talent so pretty nice there pretty cool and yeah, as I talked about though, the main thing I kind of note you can notice with tra this draft and maybe punish is that they have to do a lane basically because they have an enigma. Um, maybe you can try lane aggro with it, but um, that I'm not so sure about. Maybe what he can do is send his life stealer to the enigma lane. That's something you can definitely consider. And by sending his life stealer to the enigma lane, he can give the life stealer free lane in the sense that he could assume that I'm going to aggro because I can't try lane into this. Um, I could just leave it alone and put the Drow there. Okay, so he picks, he picks Axe, which is interesting. I um, wonder why he picks the Axe. He must he must think I'm going aggro, so he wants to cut wave. Or he thinks he can cut wave in general, because you can't really cut wave. The, the problem with Axe, typically, is that you can't really cut wave um, against tri-lanes. So maybe he's thinking that the lane's just going to get brought back, so he's just going to play normal. Um, but what I can do here is pick a hero that can mess with the axe potentially um i could pick like a, a bats over committal i could just run the tri lane normally and just allow the drow to get the free farm and have the axe have kind of less of a game but because they have the enigma he'll probably have somewhat of a game and be able to jungle eventually but right here i noticed that i definitely can push early because they have very bad tower defense they have almost no wave clear until axe has a blink dagger it's almost impossible for them to fight so i think i'm just going to pick some hero that can solo the bottom lane and give me some team fight Brewmaster is pretty fantastic here. He'll give me very nice team fight and the ability to lift the axe in fights, which can negate a lot of his damage. Pugna can do the same thing, but it's a little bit squishy. OD would have been fantastic here if I could have taken it. Same thing with Razor, but yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the Brewmaster. I'll be able to get my spells off and it gives me kind of a nice team fight ability. It's a little bit cooldown reliant, um, which is the only reason I don't love it. Maybe I could have went for the Centaur instead, but overall it's solid. Maybe I could have even went for the Tidehunter here. They definitely have ways of killing Tide. So they have Midnight Pulse, Life Sealer. Um, eh, Life Sealer's not that great. And Axe is okay. I could have went for the Tide as well. Would have given me some good 5-man potential. And Roshan as well. Um, but I like the Brew really. I, I like the Brew a lot here because it makes it very hard for Enigma to Black Hole in the early game. It makes it near impossible for Bane to get off a Fiend script. Uh, we had to lift for a Blade Metal Axe call at all stages of the game, pre BKB. Um, and it lanes well against Life Sealer if I really needed to. And it lanes well, pretty well against Axe as well. Basically, I know that I can pressure towers very easily this game, simply because they don't have uh, wave clear, and that's going to be my main advantage for them. They're going to have to wait for the Axe Blink Dagger, and when they get the Axe Blink Dagger, they have a good Infest Bomb for my Drow. Um, hopefully, the Brewmaster can help keep her alive, uh, as well as the Warcry. But definitely, I'm going to have to push my early game advantage, or else this game could get a little bit hard in the mid game, especially with the team fight from both Enigma and Axe. So here for my last pick, I have a lot of options. I could go for a DP, but that makes me cooldown reliant. I think I want one more just like sustainable right clicker that will allow me to fight in the early game. Uh, my options are kind of weird. I could go for something like a sniper, but maybe that's too 
all over the place. I think he thinks it's a Drow mid and a Luna safe lane based on that pick. So, or, or a, sorry, a Sven 4, um, Drow mid, Luna safe lane. So maybe he thinks I need a 5, but that is not the case. It is a Sven 5, Luna 4, um, and I'm going to be going for my mid here, and I will ban a mid laner. The mid laner I will be banning is uh, Death Prophet's okay because he can get on top of us. Um, Storm's okay. Maybe Ember's a little bit scary. Don't really have a good stun for him and can give them good tempo. So we're going to ban the Ember. Um, also, they have last pick, so hard for me to deal with it if, if I have to. We do have the Gust, but that's about it. Now here, I definitely want some physical damage dealer last. Um, kind of like an in-between hero. Running out of time here. I wish I could pause because I lost a lot of time. But Medusa's not bad, actually. I really like Medusa. It could be It's a solid Medusa game where we're just going to be farming. I, I think I saw some team do this, so I might have considered something a little bit less greedy if I had more time, like if I could see out the picks. Maybe something like a Lone Druid. Eh, Lone Druid's not great here. Lone Druid's okay. What else could we have gone for? Viper is alright. It's solid. Maybe Viper would have been good this game. Very hard for them to kill. Hard for them to counter pick. Okay, so they pick Sniper. I would really like that Sniper pick for them. That's a really good Sniper pick. So, also... What I would have noted before, let's just move on to heroes. So I, I was running out of time. Um, something that could have helped me in this game is maybe something I could find the backline. Brew, Brew is basically a saving grace for my team here because he will allow me to get on top of the sniper. But the sniper is fantastic. A really, really good last pick. Pretty good against Deuce and lane. I, I won't necessarily shut her down, but it's solid. And it will allow them to de-push the waves from very far away. It will be very hard for me to push and push my early game advantage. So sniper is fantastic at at really preventing me from hitting my 15 to 20 minute mark timing because shrapnels are so good against that and also sniper very very good against dusa good against drow okay against brew not great against brew this is the one matchup where it's it's not amazing because brew can get on top of him and mess with his hero so basically a lot of these fights are going to come down to um can i get the brew on top of the sniper early like can are we able to dive the tower because if we're able to dive the towers early and group up then um sniper's going to have a very hard time but the reason why I don't love the Dusa pick is it opens up for something like a sniper pick where I'm very committed to the same thing between my Drow and my Dusa where they're almost too similar, right? My Dusa is going to have a really good game and hit a point where she's super hard to deal with, which I like the Dusa here for. But at the same time, if this game goes too late, they're going to have a BKB Enigma. They're going to have a call for my Dusa. They can even have a Grip. They can have Nightmare um, and a Farm Sniper who are fantastic against Dusa. So in this game in particular, as we head into our Dota game... <laughs> Um, it's going to rely on not can I get an early Roshan right can I force the sniper to come to me and put him out of position right because if we push a tier 2 like this we can catch a sniper if we take a Rosh we can catch the sniper however he has good heroes of backing him up right he has an axe he has a midnight pulse a, a sleep so what's going to come down in this game is whether or not I can get the ability to get on top of the sniper and maybe even get an axe on my Luna but for him it's going to come down to can <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, can he get to the, the point in the game when his sniper is online right like and can't be dove basically and basically sorry i keep saying basically because i'm losing my train of thought as i watch the sniper like create a volcano <laughs> but can he get bkb on his enigma can he get a greaves a crimson um can his axe get farm this game like because my options here are i can try lane the axe and make his game hard or even just dual lane and make his game a little bit hard um, but probably what I'll be doing this game is sending my Trilene top and trying to shut down the Lifestealer. And yeah, hopefully, it's hard to know exactly how these games will go, but if I had more time, I probably would have went um, maybe for something that could help me um, jump a backliner that would stall out the game. So here like that would have been maybe a Storm Spirit. It's a little bit greedy, but in that game in particular, I think I could have gotten away with it. They have very bad lockdown, right? Accent, Blink Call is slow. Fiend's Grip and Nightmare are slow, long cast times. Maledict, not Maledict, Malefice. And Black Hole are slow. And the thing is, his last pick would have been different, right? It wouldn't have been a sniper, probably, if I had Storm. Maybe, but probably not. Um, and also, a big mistake I made that draft is banning out potentials to my draft. So, I was rushed on time and made a mistake there. So, try not to make that mistake in your game, where if you think there's heroes that could be fantastic in your draft, like, Razor is great there, and OD would have been great for me, but I ban them both, kind of just not thinking about what I want to do, and more way too focused on what I think is meta and just banning on meta rather than actually thinking about can these be good for my draft in particular so uh, hopefully this helped first drafting simulation video we're doing and if you really enjoyed this and thought you learned a lot definitely let me know down in the comments below because it's something very different nothing not even close to anything I've done before so hopefully this helped 
as always, I keep saying that, but genuinely, I mean it. Curious to see what you guys say, honestly. See you in the next video.